Well, good morning, traders. Hope everybody's having a good start to the day. Sean Kozak here with Golden Zone Trading. Uh, decided to start filming some active trading for the YouTube channel. Uh, we've got some opportunities now to, to spare up some time, and, and uh, we've had some discussions amongst myself, Raul, Michael, the trade room team, and we felt it would be beneficial to film some live trading when we're on our own time and, and uh, just to kind of give you some insights towards some of the ways we think when we're by ourselves and uh, outside of an educational environment while we're trading, et cetera, et cetera. So um, first and foremost, um, what I'm doing is I'm going to just walk you through. I'm trading, I'm trading uh, the gold contract right now, the 0418. Um, the thing here is that I didn't get filled on my second lot. I was looking to scale in at the top of this area and then get filled on the second part of my contract here or trade the bottom here as well. My, f If I would have been filled with two contracts, my first target would have been this blue line. And the reason I have a yellow line going across here is that's major resistance on the 30 minute time frame. So what I'm doing, and I'm just going to walk you through, uh, uh, and this is this is for the combine accounts for top step traders. So if you want to know what account this is, this is... Uh, this is the combine uh, account okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to essentially walk you through the decision making of this trade and and teach you a little bit about what I look for intraday uh, this is a trend trading strategy this is an intraday trend trading strategy and and uh, I'm just you know if I get filled here while we're filming this great uh, I'll cancel the second order um, I'm going to go over here to the distribution view for a second. I'm using market profile and volume profile. And what I'm doing is I'm ultimately confirming this with supply and demand analysis. So what I'm doing is I'm actually using, and I'm going to just delete the size of this zone. This is a very large supply zone that doesn't need to be there. Um, Ultimately, what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain um, why I got into this trade, what I'm looking for, um, essentially what I'm going to do, and we'll we'll see if we can find some other trades on. Uh, I trade four markets. Um, I trade uh, the gold market. I trade the Nasdaq. I trade the euro, and I trade crude oil. And we'll talk about why I trade those markets here in just a moment. So, essentially, what I'm doing is uh, the market is going up. And uh, the way that I prove that theory is, is uh, I learned uh, some some really good valuable valuable resources um, with regards to, I guess you would say looking at the market as an auction. And if you notice here, I'm going to grab a drawing tool and uh, let's see here if we get this drawing tool to come up. And there it is. Give me one second here, guys, and. Uh, I will let's do that. And let's see if this draws the way we need it. There it is. Perfect. So you can see here we're in a bit of a P-shaped pattern. And then we go into a D. Okay. And then we break out into another P. Okay. So so think about this. There's three ways the market can go. Okay. There's three ways the market can go. It can either go up. Okay. It can either go down or it can go sideways. Okay? And so essentially, when the market is going sideways, that's sideways. When the market is going up, that's a P. When it's going up, it's a P. And so what we want is we want the market to tell us what it's doing. And the best way to see that is with volume and and volume and profile data essentially so if we were to look at this and we'll, we'll, we'll wait and see if the market's going to prime it it may not lift off the value area oops it may not lift off the value area high it might it might be at the end of this trend they're, they're at the point now where they're going to see if they're going to continue to push this trend up any further we're at a major level of resistance the question becomes is can they come back up there to second retest um, ultimately, that's that's really what I'm looking to see, right? The market's either going to do two things in this trade. It's going to go up and hit the target and continue through to break through resistance, and they're going to continue to push it higher, or they're going to reverse it off this profile, and they're going to take it lower. And the only way to see that, okay, the only way to see that 
is in this P pattern right here, okay, if they decide to take it lower, they're going to break it down and it's going to either go into a D and consolidate here, or it's going to, it's going to break down and go into a downtrend and it's going to consolidate like that. There's only two patterns that can come from this. So it makes it very easy for us to know what the market's going to do next. And that's really the, the reason why I've gravitated more to looking at profiles and then using supply and demand and support and resistance to confirm the areas in which I'm looking to trade. Okay, now we're getting a lot of hesitation. This is a 30-minute Fibonacci resistance level. So this is not something to just shake a stick at. We're trading intraday time frames on on uh, on on a, on a bigger view, right? And so we need to be very aware of of how to manage risk around these levels where there's technical analysis telling us that we got to be aware of it, right? Now, you could do this. We could move our stop to break even, and I could cancel the other order, right? It's looking like we're quite far away from where I was looking to get in with the fill. You'll see here that. Basically, I got filled in that area at demand. So if I order canceled, pull this up, you know, risk adverse traders would automatically be moving to break even right now because they've already hit their first target objective and we may not get to the further out target. So at the very least, this trade is a break even covering slippage and commissions. So what we're doing is we're, we're in a risk free environment, which is really the best environment a trader can be in. But the goal is sometimes when you're waiting to see what the market's going to do, you get kicked out of the trade before the magic happens. So it's a decision that a trader must make on their own. Since I'm only trading a one contract lot, I didn't get filled on the second. Unfortunately, I wish I would have gotten filled on the second contract. But shoulda, coulda, woulda, right? So what I'm waiting to see here, and I'm just going to go over to the distribution view. I'm waiting to see if they're going to break it above this value area high area. This is a value area high on this current profile. So in order for us, in order for us to basically expect it to hit a larger target objective, okay, it needs to break out above the value area high. If they can't push through the value area high and continue this trend, the only other option is for them to come down and test the value area low again or come back into value. Right, so we're at a decision point. And one of the things that I like to look at to tell me, right, to tell me, and, and, and one thing I didn't mention, and I do want to mention it now, is, is that sometimes you got to give yourself room to let the trade play. My initial stop loss was down here because the previous value area high is here from the previous profile. So sometimes what they'll do is the, the institutions and the bigger traders will, will slam the market down. Give me one second here. I'm going to go back and... There we go. Let's go in here. There, I just had to reset the profile. So basically what a lot of times will happen is they'll try to slam it down right off volatility to retest the previous value area high and then they'll push it back up before deciding whether they're going to reverse it or not right so that's that's really the question here is whether or not um, you know they can continue to lift this profile and trend the market higher it they're in a decision period and we have news out at 830 so they might be waiting for that and uh, you know in, in all in all essence the value rate high is right here. So, I mean, technically that's target reach. It's, it's a profitable trade already. That's, that's what I want to point out is that, is that I'm just, just moving my risk here because they've already hit my objective as a target. That's, and that's, that's what it's really important to understand here is that I'm just, I'm just giving the market more room to hit a bigger target. Now, do you notice here that this, this came all the way up here and then basically they reversed it down, okay? If you notice right there at the low of that wick is where that, that high came to, right? So that's a major area of resistance, 
So what I'm looking at doing is I'm trying to front run that area, right? So let's go in here. One, you know, we could go three ticks in front of it to try and get a bigger trade here, right? To try and get a little bit more lift on that. So, and, and here's, here's the supply and demand concept, right? This is basically just telling us we're in an uptrend based off profiles. But when you see here, I got in at the long at 1320. Well, I also was able to confirm that that's also in an area of demand, right? on the the other chart the other chart that i look at just looks at supply and demand and support and resistance and i look to see if it gives me an opportunity to confirm using other technical analysis to be able to say yeah that lines up at the exact same place as the profile and it just adds extra confluence to the trade right that's really what i'm looking at i'm looking at confluence to the trade right so you know, I'm, um, you know, while we're doing this, I'm waiting for this trade and, and we'll wait and see if this decides to lift. You know, it, it's, it's come up here on three bars and it's having a hard time breaking through that value area. And that's something to pay attention to, but it's, I'm not, I'm not uh, completely uh, against the area yet. It still has potential. What I do want to pay attention to is this, right? That's institutional order flow. That's the CTV indicator that comes with the market profile software suite. And what it's doing is it's telling us the flow of capital from the hedge funds and the money managers right now. You'll notice that it doesn't matter if it's if it's above or below the zero line. What matters is that it's red or green. When it's green, you know, bigger money, smarter money is buying into this rally. When it's red, there's taking, there's, there's profit taking, there's some selling going on, and which, which makes sense because we're at the value rate high at the decision point. Some of the smart traders in here that got in, they got in at the value rate low where I did, and they're taking profits already because from an intraday high frequency standards, right? They're, they're, they're not looking to take the entire move of the market. They're trading a lot of money, right? So they're moving it quickly in and out of here. But, you know, it's starting to push above the value rate high. It has potential. It's looking like the impulse is still going up. I'd like to see this turn green, and then that will tell us that the money's flowing back into the long side of the market from the hedge fund side, and, uh, and we can wait and see here. You know, we're going to wait and see. We're at a big round number, 1321. If they can break it up here, if they can break it up, you know, it's, uh, you know, and this is just trading one contract. And, and what's really valuable here is that if you can get good trading one contract and get your targets taken, right, or even one to two contracts, get your targets taken. Uh, the reason I wanted to get filled with two is because I would have already banked profit at eight ticks here. I would have already taken eight ticks. That's so eighty bucks per contract, right? Eighty dollars. Uh, I've only been in here for you know fifteen minutes, right? That's uh, you know a lot of people work you know three four hours during their day job to make eighty dollars on their paycheck, right? That's the goal here is to understand the, the the payoff between learning to get good on small size first, and then uh, and then getting good and then then just adding that, right? Now, I do want to point out, I do want to take a look at crude oil. Let's go take a look at crude oil. I'm going to switch over here and uh, switch to the other accounts so that if something does happen, we can get into the market. Now, I do want to point out, um, I do want to point out that uh, we are on the inside of yesterday's profile, which is an inside day, right? So we're basically ranging inside that market. And I do want to keep an eye on this trade, so we're not going to just lose sight of that. Now, the thing here is I'm going to split these profiles, but there's not there's no real split to take place, right? So I look three levels deep, one, two, so that's one, two, three here on this side, one, two. So there is a profile split that can happen right here. I'm going to split the queue, right, and there it is. So there's the profile split, and we are sitting here. Um, we are breaking up outside of that range, but I don't have a trade. There is no trade because it's already come in and it's already hit the area. Actually, you know what? Let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at that. Distribution view. So we're going to take a look at that here. So do you see how they're breaking the profile up on this day? They're trying to push it higher in the overnight session, the Globex. 
and we're going to wait and see if they're going to lift off that. Uh, it's been just sitting here. It's been a dead market. right? It has not moved at all. Okay. So it has not moved at all. Now, knowing that, this is what we consider a D pattern, right? So we're at a D, and then it broke up but it's forming another big D in here. So it's not really it's not really giving you much clarification of an uptrend yet, right? So that's where we need to be very careful of the fact that uh you know that this is still in the formation of change. And normally what I look for is I look for um after it breaks up, I look for one, two, three letters deep in the profile and then what I do is I look for it to come back. It's see how it's you've got one, two, three, four, five, six letters in that profile right now. That tells me that it's been sitting here for a long period of time and, and it's not doing anything. Right? So you see how it came back down here? It's trying to test value again. Um essentially that's the, the, you can see the rally, pullback, rally, pullback. You can see that trend is trying to happen. And uh you know, we'll wait and see. You know, wait and see here what's going to happen. So I'm, I'm personally not going to trade this level, mainly because uh, it's, it's just not, it's not really in play right now. It's, uh, it's sitting here waiting. It, it, it could come back and test that. It might be able to come back and test that. But normally, I like to see fresh areas, and to me, it's not as fresh as I'd like it to be. So we'll, we'll wait and see on that. Same thing happened on the euro trade. Their euro euro was um right, the euro came in here and it uh it did break up. See I have the value rate. And the reason I'm looking at the value rate lows is because the value rate lows are essentially uh uh what you want to be trading in the uptrend. You don't want to be trading the value rate highs because that's counter trend. Now if you're a counter trend trader, that's a different story. Uh I personally have more uh, more comfort with the impulse of the market than I do against the, the grain of it. So if we go here to the distribution view, you'll see it came down again and it tested value. You see how it came back down and tested that box? Personally, um, you know, I could have jumped into that trade. I definitely could have jumped into that trade. I just didn't because I just find that as it sits here, the better trade is here. The better trade is on that wick. Right, because that wick is the first touch after that profile, and then it spikes all the way up on that bar, and then it comes back down to test it here again. So that would have been the more ideal location, right? But it came back down to test value again, and so that's that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at that area. Now it'll be interesting to see. You see how it already came up to hit the value rate high. That's the target. All right, so I, I don't know what's going to happen here on this gold trade. It might stop me out. We might have talked all morning here in this video, and then all of a sudden it comes and stops me out, or they might lift the rally here, right? You can see the institutional money is still selling into that rally, so uh, it'll be interesting to see what's going to happen, right? And uh, the NASDAQ is still, uh, it's nothing's happening this early in pre-market, so, uh, you know, they might they might come back down to test it again one more time. They might come back down and, and see, since I, I didn't get a chance to uh, do that, this is more of aggressive. One thing we could do is we could bring it back down. We could bring it back down, and then I can stick to my original plan. Order pending. And look to scale in on the second lot, right? Because that will give me the opportunity to trade my full size risk on this trade, okay? And then what it'll give me the opportunity to do is it'll average into my, my risk down into this value area low. And it'll give me the opportunity to put a, a target here and then hold for a second a second contract there as well. So that's the other option that we have. Because it really hasn't come back down to test value that much. right? You can see that it's only been here one and it lifted. So that's that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking to see if it's going to give me that opportunity. And uh, that's T1 already on the first wick that came up. So I'm going to pause the mic here, guys. We've already gone 20 minutes into this. And uh, and uh, I'm just uh, going to let the market show us what it's going to do. Now, one thing I do want to point out, and the reason I'm confident about this area, 
is it actually took out massive resistance to break this level of support. So it might come down to uh, to see this, but if you take a look at, at where my other order is, it's sitting right here in a very, very big level of support because broken resistance becomes new support. So even if they do come down and the trade goes negative again, only to come in to hit my second order, I'm confident in that. I'm confident in that because my stop loss is down here nested below the value rate high of the previous profile. Plus, it's backed by another demand zone, which gives me an opportunity. Now, my risk and reward is a bit skewed, not in my favor, right? But once I average into this trade, I'll be able to adjust for at least a one-to-one -one on, my, on my bigger target, and we'll wait and see what's going to happen here. And we might not see much movement here until... Uh, until news comes out and uh, we never want to be exposed to too much risk housing starts and building permits come out at 8:30, right so um, I often get a lot of questions with regards to why I choose the markets that I'm trading and uh, I have a statistical model that I started building a while back that uh, allows for me to study uh, the markets that I trade based off volume and volatility and what this allows for is um, I run baskets of instruments through the fractal converter and what I it's one of the tools we use for studying time frames and it allows me to convert time charts to volume so what I'll do is I'll just explain this and uh, essentially you'll see that this is a 5575 volume chart but this is a 30 minute profile chart. So ultimately what's happening is is that a 30 minute time frame converted to volume okay uh, on gold right this is this column here so I have uh, this column right here it's 5575 so on average every 30 minutes gold trades about 5575 5, contracts and that is essentially the statistical study of of over uh, two years of trading data. Now you'll notice here that I have um, I have ultimately, if if you take a look, the the goal here to understand is is that I have these gray columns, and then I also have these blue columns. Now. What I do is I don't just look at the 30 minute column. These, these are the volume numbers for each time frame conversion. And then these are the average volume for that time frame, right? So basically when I look at this, all the average volume, I look at which market has more volume out of the currencies, which market has more volume out of the indices, which market has more volume out of you know commodities which market has more volume out of metals and the same with the debt market so what I've done is I've summed up that if I'm gonna trade the currency markets I'm gonna trade the euro it's got more volume which means more liquidity if I'm gonna trade the indexes with the exception of the the ES having extreme volume compared to everything else the Nasdaq's the next biggest choice the euro the DAX I don't trade the DAX but the the energy oil has more volume uh, above average volume compared to natural gas gold obviously is better than silver and then we've got uh, the ZB now I've built a persona that allows me to also compare volatility so this is range fractals instead of volume right so people ask me why do I do certain things and I have a reason for that right I don't just pick random time frames and random markets for no reason um, out of all of the opportunity that's available order filled looks like I think I just got filled on my second contract let's go back here and see here so there it is so I'm gonna basically see if I can adjust this can't do that because it's uh, I'm gonna split order cancelled these out and I'm going to basically put sell stop market order pending Order pending. And I'm going to put one contract Order here pending. at my target. You'll see how I, I got my average cost base in here, and I'm going to bring my other target up here. Order now. pending. So there's the... They're coming down to test the value area low. If they're going to break it, they're going to break it. If they're not, they're going to not. And that's what I've been waiting to see. I've been waiting to see if they're going to come back down to value, which they did. And we're still in an uptrend, guys. That's the thing. We, we can't get worried 
that this market is not going to go up unless it proves that it's not. It has not proven that it's not yet. And the only way it's going to prove that it's not going to go up is if they take out the value area low and they decide to trade down here. And a lot of times, the last place that that is going to prove that it's going to happen is the retest on the previous value area high, right here. So where would you want your stop loss to be? That's the question, right? Where, where would we look to place our stop loss? Well, if we think that this is the last area it's going to hold, right, a good place would be just directly below it, right? Just directly below, one, two, three, so one, two. Or you can have our stop loss right about there. And, and then that allows me to have a little bit of a bigger <clears throat> room for movement, right? It gives me, you know, you see the risk and reward is not 2 to 1, it's not 3 to 1. What we can do, though, is we can basically increase that a bit, and we can look to hold for a bigger target, right, on that, on that other area, right? So let's go back, take a look at technical analysis. If we know that the value area high is here of that profile, Okay, and we know that we have demand supporting that uptrend. Where is the next place? Well, one, two, the FIB's been there. It's been tested. Value area high is like around one tick there, so let's take that out. So we're just sitting right in front of that FIB level. And then where is the next target? Well, it, this was a serious area of resistance, right? So we could get greedy and we could put it way up here, or I could sit down there and say, you know what? Despite the fact that my risk and reward is not 2 to 1, 3 to 1, what we do is we automatically change that. As soon as it takes my second target out, or my first target out, I'm going to now move my stop to break even. Because now I've, I'm more exposed to risk, and I have the opportunity to see that if it at least takes my target now for a sec first, uh, an opportunity, I want to take the risk off the table because if they decide to grind it up, at least I'm in a risk-free trade and I've banked some profit now. And that's just better money management, better better trade management principles, right? You'll notice how that my stop loss is also protected by the second area of demand. So we'll leave it there and we'll see how they're going to play this out. It'll be interesting to see what they decide to do here. The Back to the study, um, volume okay, tells me liquidity. Range tells me volatility. So if we're going to be looking at day trading any market, wouldn't it make sense that if we're going to pick markets in baskets of other markets, that we choose markets that have more volume and more volatility? And therefore, you're not sitting there, well, if you're going to trade currencies, I'm going to trade indices, I'm going to trade you know, commodities or metals. You know, There's a lot of markets to choose from. Which ones do you want to trade? Which ones do you choose to trade? That's the question. Right? That's really the better question. So I created a persona list for myself, and uh, basically when we look at this, it gives me the, a breakdown of volatility and volume, which are traders' two best friends, right? It's um, ultimately, the, the, you want to look at you know, good scenarios versus poor or okay and average, right? So, and, that's, and that's why I trade the four markets that I do trade. I've chosen that for a reason. Okay, so hopefully that adds a little bit of profiles. Now I also have min and max settings for the the institutional tick volume, so you'll notice that I can track institutional money management, and then I have a a risk profile for myself because I usually base my stops off of average true range, which is a factor of uh, volatility risk. Right, so if we go over here, you can see that I've got my risk set out. And it's basically on max risk, right? So if I'm scaling into trade, so with one contract, with a slightly larger stop, gives me opportunity to change risk parameters without going over my max risk, right? And the reason I built this out this way is because the combines for Top Step Trader are very restrictive. They have very tight risk management rules. So hopefully you learn from that. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about what this means and how that works, it's... Uh, it's years of experience, years of, of being involved in the markets and, and running trading rooms and designing software with programmers and and uh, hopefully you can learn from that and we can help you get to where you want to be. Now, I do want to point out, my target is one tick above the value area high. We were able to br get to that area three times before. I'm banking on the fact that it's going to give me a little bit more opportunity to come up there if they can, but if you notice, the institutional money is still selling into this. So I think personally they're waiting for the next 15 minutes deciding where they're going to push with the news, right? 
and uh, you know if you take a look at risk reward to the second target see if that meets some traders are big on the risk and reward factor you'll notice that I actually have better at least one to one to my second target and the reason why this targets in place is to to bank some profit outside of where I think that they would come to test that now if you're new to market profile trading I don't expect you to understand all of this right out the gates the reason we run a trading room and we have training on the software and we have experienced educators that design this th these tools and look at these things um, is because we've made the mistakes that a lot of traders make and we've gone through the the notions right so if we can help eliminate those further and get you to where you want to be faster then then that's why we're here right so uh, we have a subscription to our trading room you can subscribe to it um, most importantly uh, you're not having to spend a whole bunch of money buying software before you can at least come in and watch what some of our trade room moderators are doing and you know watching some of the videos that I'm putting out on the YouTube channel we all have our own little style right so we'll see here if it's going to come up and take it they're testing that value area high it'll be very interesting to see if they can lift it here 1321 is a big round number, right? Every 10 ticks on on gold is a, is 100 bucks per contract. So every it's 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 a round number here. So that's the question if they can push it above here. Getting a lot of buying pressure on these wicks in here, right? We are getting buying pressure into this profile. So uh, And we are close to that fib level. That's 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 the big ticket here. We're we're getting at the value high on a fib level, and uh, right. See, they're coming up to the value high right now. Can they break it above? A smart trader will do this and take the profit at the value area high not be greedy I'm already in with two contracts okay I'm already in with two contracts and this is just teaching you better management better risk management because now it gives me the and and I might have been able to get filled there had I done that sooner okay we'll give it some we'll give it an opportunity here if they can lift it give us one more opportunity here and that's what we're doing. We're, we're waiting to see. See, the value rate high has been tested several times here. We're waiting to see if they're going to bust through it. And it's a decision that has to be made as a collective audience in the market. Unfortunately, if you take a look down here, we've got institutions selling into that. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's interesting. It tells you a little bit about the, the sentiment of this scenario right here, right? The sentiment is they are taking profits into that push up and that's where we're waiting to see and that's really what this is the profiles and supply and demand are here to basically give you comfort of confluence of multiple aspects of data right that's why I love using supply and demand with okay with the um, that's why I love using supply and demand with profiles because it allows me the opportunity to see different aspects of data coming together and uh, and meeting at the same place but what I what I also like is I like to see that I have this as a comfort engagement tool it allows me the opportunity to um, to see what they're doing it allows me the opportunity to see the big money what they're doing right so if I go into the indicator settings and I basically you know go in here and and uh, I look at the um, well, I got a lot of toolbar shortcuts on there that might that's not necessary but if I take a look at the cumulative tick volume and I say we're, we're going minimum 10 contracts maximum 50 right so what that means is that I'm trading and every one of these uh, data points in the CTV indicator it requires it's looking at 10 to 50 lot trades period so minimum 10 contract trades right so minimum 10 contracts that's it's 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 prop money it's it's smart money it's hedge fund money it's a little bit now they came up to test it they did not fill my order they did not get me in they did not get me in and they they came close two times there right so 
the thing with this is it allows me to look at institutional money, right? Smart money. We're not looking at we're not looking at a big big banks. We're looking at prop firms, hedge funds. Normally the the buy side market, right? Because there's there's two sides of the street. You've got sell side, which is normally institutions and big market makers. You got buy side, money managers, hedge funds. That's the name of the street. It's not necessarily their bias for trades, right? So with that, it tells me that the 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 smaller institutions, the hedge funds, money managers, the funds, those guys, um, they're they're selling into that, right? Ten to fifty contract rates. So, if that starts to change green, that would be nice. I don't see that happening until we get a really big push. I don't think that'll happen until after news, right? So, let's wait and see here, guys. They could not fill it. Maybe I had an opportunity and I waited too long, right? That's just, um, that's the reality of it. We're going to wait and see if they can lift this here. I'm going to pause the mic here and just wait to see what happens. I want to kind of talk about emotional management as well, right? Because we've seen the trade profitable. We've seen the trade up here at my target. Did not fill it based off of the order flow. And then it comes back down to break-even status, right? I want to talk about what I'm looking at from a technical analysis standpoint because we are getting ready to come into news and we should see a volatility push here and it could go either way. I want to talk about where my stop is and I also want to talk about what's supporting the protection of this trade. Take a look at this massive resistance level right and if we take a look at that we can see that we broke above resistance and it now acts as major support seeing that that's a huge buffer that gives our trade protection right because that tells us the market supports this area and it's usually about an average true range factor that's going to give us a buffer on that right so this area protects my stop plus my stop is well below it in an area of demand that if they decide to spike it on news, it could push back up. Now gold, it's an erratic market, right? It's got its own behavior and it does definitely have some wildness to it. So we need to be very cautious around that and understand that I am position size accordingly. Not every trade is going to be a winner or a loser. We have to understand that. And the reasoning behind the decision making is well thought out and well played out. I'm just going to mute the mic here and we'll wait for, we'll wait to see what's going to happen off the news. They are starting to lift it slightly. There's the institutional buying coming back into the CTV. Do you see how Order that happened? Order filled. There's the target. So here's what we're going to do, guys. Let's do Order this. canceled. Let's put this back to break even. Bring this down. Order canceled. Okay. Do you see what happened? We got an automatic spike in the CTV indicator. Do you see how the, the green came in here as soon as I basically, as soon, now I've got my stop at break even, so I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to get greedy. We're going into news here. It could push either way, and ultimately I'm not prepared to take a stop out on a massive volatility spike just because uh, I'm, I'm getting greedy, right? So I could leave myself exposed to risk, or I could sit here and I could be a smart trader. I've already taken eight ticks on my first target and I have upside potential with no downside risk, right? So this is something that it's very important to relate with. There's not a lot of room for movement, right? So it could either, either come down and spike me out or it could come up and hit my target. But what's really important here to understand is that as soon as that CTV indicator started going green, we seen an immediate spike right back up to the value rate high. So institutions came in and started to push off that report. Now, the, 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 the report is not yet complete. It's 831. It did come out. It did come out. So we did have negative numbers on that, right? So we did have negative, uh, we did have negative numbers on the housing starts, which will, uh, you know, dictate this the way they dictate it, right? Institutions see things differently than the retail trader's perspective. Now, I do want to point out the euro... The euro did come in just like it did off of gold here. The euro did come in to the value area low, like I said, and pushed up, but it did not react off that news just yet. And if we take a look here at oil, let's go take a look at oil. NASDAQ's not really going to move until the U.S. Open that much. 
sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't if you take a look at oil oil did come broke above that profile it isn't an uptrending profile scenario look what happened it came down you remember I said we're not, I'm not interested in trading that just the way it was set up and it did rally off that it did catch the rally so even though it did it wasn't meeting my criteria it still rallied off of that low in the value area low so it's the same trade that I'm in on the gold trade right it's the same environment so it'll be interesting to see you know which market has the stamina to push up which market has the stamina to push uh, further uh, I'm glad I was able to at least take my first target it's not I'm not looking for huge profits here I'm looking for consistent base hits guys because trading is about the follow-through ongoing it's really about the ability to uh, to consistently do what just happened every time and what's nice about this is that we have the ability we have the ability to, I had the ability to take a profit target and still give myself upside potential for bigger movement. If it doesn't, then I'm still in the same scenario I was before I got filled on the second contract. Looks like they're going to come down and hit my stop, guys. I would expect something like that because what happens is the institutions are going to move the market around with the news, right? It's only three minutes after this report. So, uh, the next trade right so that's always the next question is what's the next decision what's the next decision here well the next decision becomes let's go back to the profile view for a second I'm gonna split this profile for a second and resplit it just so that I can do that there it is so if you notice value area is moving up a bit so the value area is moving up a little bit and so what's happening here is is that they're either gonna do two things I'm going to grab my little drawing tool again here. Grab my drawing tool. Okay. So they're going to push it with this P pattern, right? And they're either going to do two things. They're going to stay here and consolidate, or they're going to push it up again with the P pattern. Or they're going to break it down. And what we want is we want a B pattern. If they break it down with a B pattern, guess what I want to do? I want to wait for them to break it down. I want a short the value very high. I want to take that trend down. I want to I want to trade either way. If they take it back up again and I hit my target, I'm going to look to trade long again on the value area low as the market creates new areas of value. So I'm waiting to trade long back up here if I take my target and I'm waiting to short this down here if they come back and slam my stop. I'm still going to look to re-enter but on the opposite side of the market. Okay, hopefully that uh, gives a little bit more perspective and this has been a 45 minute play by play on an oil tr on, a, on a gold trade right it's uh, sometimes trades happen quick and sometimes you have to sit and wait right and uh, right now I'm waiting to see what they're gonna do I'm gonna mute the mic and uh, give us some time to unfold that well traders it uh, looks like they came down and took the stop so order cancelled take that target off and uh, they might come down and lift it off support again here but I'm just not prepared to sit there and expose to risk so that was a great trade in and out went to value very low value very high and uh, off the news it looks like they might have a hard time lifting that offer and uh, like I said if they break it back down below I'm looking to short the value area high as the new change in value now that's going to take some time to unfold What's nice about this is there's all opportunities across the board on four different markets. So it gives you time to prepare, gives you time to plan it out, and most importantly, it gives you time to be a patient trader and more, more in tune with what's happening looking at profile changes rather than just getting in and taking every single trade in the market. On average, um, on average, let me just pull this up here for a second. Uh, actually, I don't have the file. What I'll do is I'll, f I'll, uh, I'll film these ongoing and uh, and keep you guys in tune with some live trading back to back and uh, hopefully you guys are learning from these videos if you have any questions shoot us an email we'd be more than happy to help you out